Artificial intelligence or AI has the potential to revolutionize the way we create and consume media. In particular, AI has been used to generate original text, video scripts and artwork and it's becoming increasingly common for companies and individuals to use AI tools to create content. There are a number of potential benefits to using AI to generate original content. One of the main advantages is efficiency. AI algorithms can process large amounts of data quickly, allowing them to generate content at a much faster rate than a human ever could. This can be especially useful for tasks which require a large volume of content to be produced, such as creating social media posts or generating descriptions for e-commerce websites. That sounds great, right? Pretty good. Until you realize that that introduction to this video was actually written by an AI in under 30 seconds. They are not my words. <laughs> In fact, the AI gave me a whole essay on the pros and cons of using AI for original text and artwork, and honestly, what it produced wasn't bad. It was a little dry, a little simple, it didn't really go into a lot of detail, but honestly, pretty solid information. And if I wanted, I could have taken that short essay that it produced and turned it into something bigger and more complex and more detailed if I wanted. Or I or any other person could very easily have sat here, read out this AI generated essay without doing anything else to it and produced five minutes of content, filmed it like this, hit published, and chances are none of you would have been any the wiser. This is the entire essay it came up with and honestly, it kind of blows my mind a little bit, but not necessarily in a good way. This is one of the things I find so hard to swallow about AI generated creative content. It allows anyone to start publishing content online at any time, even without any skill of their own, without any understanding of the medium they're producing, without any actual knowledge or practice or time or effort put into it. I am absolutely all for tools and techniques which lower barriers to entry. I don't think people have to have a lot of money or have to have taken this and this and this class or they need this and this and this to get started on something creative. I think people should be able to, you know, get started drawing with just a pencil and paper. They should be able to get started with photography with just the cheapest camera they can. There should be ways into these fields for people who don't have a lot of resources, but I'm not sure AI generated content is the way to do that. I just can't really get behind people taking credit for work they didn't actually produce themselves, especially when it's at the detriment of the other people who were creating the content that it's based on. That said, I do find the world of AI very fascinating and I'm very aware there are a number of pros as well as the cons to AI generated content. I'm sure recently we've all seen AI content filling up our Instagram feeds. I know I have. You know, they're like avatars that people have had designed with their faces in different like art styles and cartoon forms and stuff like that. I've seen people making AI books recently. I toyed around with the idea of doing a video in which I get an AI to try and write poetry and see what it comes up with and then talking about it with you guys. If that's something you'd be interested in watching, please let me know. But I've also seen lots of people debating the content at length. Some people are like really pro AI and think it's a really useful tool that we should be utilizing to its full potential and others are like, no, this is really messed up and here's why. In all honesty, I find it a little more complex than just AI good, AI bad. Nothing in this world is completely original. Look at my own website as an example and you'll see a few instances of me saying that I took inspiration from one artist or another for a couple of my paintings. This, uh, you, can't, uh, you can just about see on camera, this piglet painting that I have here, this was inspired by another artist that I absolutely love. And I looked at her own work and I took like the rough outline of what she'd done and then started trying to sort of mimic her brush strokes and stuff in order to learn a new watercolor painting technique that I really liked and wanted to try for myself. You'll also see this drawing and painting that I did, which um, is based off a cover from one of my, well, it's one of my favorite covers from the Wolf Among Us Fable comics, which are complicated. It's the game The Wolf Among Us based on the Fable comics, but it's the comics based on the game. So the comics based on the game based on the comics. I think it's a really beautiful piece of artwork and I want to try and replicate it myself. I'm also personally a huge fan of collages, both physical collages and doing kind of digital collages and stuff in which I cut up and stick together images from magazines or photographs or stickers along with sometimes drawing or painting over them to create new pieces of art. All of this is taking inspiration from other people, copying bits from them, stealing bits from them, taking inspiration from here and there and creating something new and unique that is my own. And I'm absolutely not the only person who does this. 
most artists do. Take a walk around any museum and you'll see even the masters borrowed elements from each other. They learnt from each other, they took inspiration from each other. A couple of months back me and my partner went to Paris and we had the most amazing weekend there. And we spent this one absolutely wonderful morning in the Musée de Musée d'Orsay, the Orsay Museum. I, oh, I can't speak French, it's the accent, can't do it. And we actually spent most of our time there up on the third floor through uh, walking through the Impressionist galleries because that's what we both love. And it was absolutely magical and oh my God, it was so incredible to see some of my favorite paintings up close and in person and it was just absolutely wonderful. There was the most amazing work by Monet, Degas, Van Gogh, like some of my absolute favorites. It was wonderful. But one of the conversations that we kept having as we walked around and we were reading about the paintings and learning about them and their background and the artists was we kept noticing how similar some paintings were even between different artists. Like when two artists had lived in the same area at the same time or they'd gone to the same school or they'd studied under the same master or they were part of the same sort of like artists group, we noticed that they sometimes used the same techniques there were similar brush strokes between different people, different people had similar colour palettes, sometimes they had similar compositions, or they all drew faces in the same sort of way, they all drew rocks in the same sort of way, they all drew cypress trees in the same sort of way, looking at you Van Gogh and a couple of others. And it was actually really lovely to see them all sort of taking inspiration from each other, and we could walk around and look at the different paintings and we were like, oh, so-and-so painted this in this year, but then a few years later so-and-so did this, you can see how he took inspiration from this, and then she did this with it and changed it in this way and stuff and it was wonderful to see, it was absolutely incredible. Artists taking inspiration from each other isn't something new, it's something we've always done. In fact Austin Cleon literally wrote a book called Steal Like an Artist in which he gives 10 sort of rules or techniques for how to create art and be creative and create new things and the first one is to steal like an artist and in it he talks about how to take inspiration from others without just straight up copying them, how to, you know, understand which elements of a piece of work you like and which ones you want to take inspiration from and how you can use that in a new way and how people have done that literally since the beginning of time. Everything is essentially building on everything else. Nothing is completely 100% original and that's okay. Hey, and if you're interested, here's an AI summarizing that book for you. <laughs> it's absolutely insane. I can't believe that it can do this. It's a little scary. So taking inspiration from others, stealing from others, copying others, however you want to call it, is very normal. But we have to ask, is there a difference ethically, practically, and economically between being inspired by another's work, straight up copying another's work, using part of another's work in your own, and using others' work to train an AI to generate more art itself. What is the difference between all of those things? Are some more acceptable than others? Are some more okay than others? Where do we draw the lines of what's acceptable and for what purpose? How do we decide in which situations we need to credit the original artist and offer them monetary compensation for the bits we've essentially taken from them? One of the biggest problems at the minute is that people's original artwork is being used to train AI and essentially used as building blocks to create new artwork without the original artist's permission. And more than this, the original artists aren't credited, they aren't being paid for their work, they aren't opting into this, so how is it okay? I think most of us can sit there and say, yeah, this seems wrong, this seems unfair on the original artists, but where do we actually draw these lines about what's okay and what isn't? When I sit at home by myself and I cut up magazines to make collages just for fun, do I also need to be sat there thinking, well, I should be paying these photographers and designers and models because I'm sampling their work? Or should I only be doing that if I plan to sell prints of my collages that I create? Or does it count as fair use where I've transformed them enough that I shouldn't have to necessarily credit or pay the original content creators? And what about if it's not just me as an individual creating this for fun? What if it's not me as an individual selling prints? What if it's a business commis commissioning someone to create a collage for them? If it's for a big business and there's a big budget, do they need to credit the original creators? Do they need to pay them? What really constitutes fair use? Then of course there's the argument that 
the act of actually selecting which arts to be inspired by is as much of a creative process as the actual creation itself. So when I sit there for hours, shifting through hundreds of pages of magazines, looking for the right shade of purple, the correct sized eye, or when a musician spends hours learning to do a cover of a song, or when they shift through hours of music looking for something they can sample in a new song. When a writer reads story after story after story finding something that they want to parody, for example. That in itself is a creative process, knowing what you want to take inspiration from, sorting through the good from the bad, the useful for the un from the unhelpful. That is a creative process. It requires skill, thoughtfulness, an understanding of the medium you're working with. It requires creativity. It requires an understanding of your audience. But when an AI takes inspiration from others' work, there's no conscious thought there. Can we really call it a creative process when it's just determining, we need yellow, this is yellow, I'll take this, and so on? I'd argue there's no real creativity in it, just algorithms and trial and error, no real art in the creative process in selecting the inspirations, you know? So could we potentially argue that it's creative when humans do it, but not creative when computers do it? That said, there's still the human element at the end where humans have to then shift through the AI generated content and pick out what's useful and what isn't and what they want to use, what they don't, what they like and what they don't like and so on. But we'll talk more about that towards the end of this video. One part of my brain is constantly marveling at the quality of AI content. It's just got better and better and better, especially over the last few years. The quality of it has absolutely shot up and it's exciting to know that it can only get better from here. It's just gonna keep improving. It's already impressive, but it's gonna get better. I mentioned this briefly earlier, but recently a man published a children's book which has literally no author. The entire story and illustrations were produced by AI and it does look really, really cute. It looks very well put together. And there's a part of my brain which is just like, hey, let's not just scoff at this new tool just because it's new. That's an impressive thing it can do. I keep thinking about other instances in the past where people were scared by new technology. You know, some people didn't like when cameras replaced portrait artists. They didn't like when TV came along and overshadowed radio. Some people thought creating digital art undermined people who make traditional art. All these new technologies have kept coming along throughout basically all of time. And people have always been worried that they're gonna push people out of jobs and create all these problems. When in reality, in most instances, new tech mostly just caused new industries and techniques to grow and thrive and adapt and everything changed often for the better. I'm not entirely sure we can say the same thing for AI. I think it's a little bit different. And to give you a very, very oversimplified example, let's say when photography came along and suddenly people weren't having their portraits painted as, painted as often. Sure, some painters lost their jobs and they were replaced by photographers, but that meant there were still jobs for people. It just meant instead of portrait artists, there were photographers. Instead of one person doing this job, one person was doing this job. Instead of people painting portraits, we had people taking photos, developing films, printing photos, and so on. The new technology, the photography over the portrait painting, still required skill and creativity and time and effort. There were still artists being paid for a creative job. And there were still some jobs left for painters because people still wanted that traditional medium. There were still jobs available overall. I don't think that's something we can really say with AI because with AI generated art, for example, so many artists and creatives and designers are already undervalued and underpaid, especially by large companies. So if they're replaced by AI, it's not creating more jobs. It's not really helping them. So if people are using AI generated art instead of actual artists, all that's doing is taking jobs away from them without providing new ones. And it's lowering the cost to get original art, which means the other artists, even when people want traditional artists and digital artists and real human artists, it means that they're being undervalued even more. People are gonna be paying them even less because they can get it cheaper elsewhere with no humans involved. If a company is motivated purely by profit and they can get an AI to generate 10 artworks for them in 10 minutes and they barely have to pay anything, they're gonna probably do that instead of commissioning an artist and having to wait weeks and then hopefully paying them a much higher and fairer wage. And that seems unfair. I mean, that's good for the company and its profits, not so good for the actual people who need jobs. I think the difference between like 
photography versus portrait painting, streaming versus live TV or anything else like that, is that AI versus human artists actually puts people out of a job. It takes the jobs away from these people with, without offering alternative jobs. It drives down the demand and value of actual artists' work even more, and it just doesn't seem fair to me. That said, I have seen some artists who are fans of AI, and they don't see it as ever being able to fully replace real artists. Some people see it as a tool to help them improve their own artworks. Some people have said things like how uh, they use AI to generate pieces, which they then use as inspiration to go on and create their own pieces of art. They use it to help know things like layouts and colour schemes, or generate ideas for original characters, which, you know, seems fair to be honest, and if that's how they want to work, then who am I to judge? I think if people are still getting stuff out of it, why not? It is a powerful tool. But then this leads us on to the last point I want to make, which is kind of a bit of a grey area. I'm not sure whether it's a pro or a con. I think even as AI becomes more mainstream and its ability improves, we'll still always need a human element in there somewhere. We saw at the start of this video that an AI can generate a script for me, but it can't mimic my personal voice. It can't mimic my personal style, or at least not yet. It can't tell personal anecdotes. It can't give you my personal opinion. It can't put any real heart or soul or passion into the writing. It's a generic script that anyone could read out. It's nothing unique to me. And I like to think that's why people come to my channel and watch my videos, because they want to hear my perspective rather than just a perspective. So I guess it's the same with any AI generated art or script writing or stories or poetry or anything like that. You still need a human to come along in the end and pick out what works and what doesn't and make it more personal and also to fact check. Because you can feed anything into an AI and it'll generate it and regurgitate it, but it can't necessarily accurately fact check for you. You still need to come along and say, hang on a minute, is what it's saying right? And we need to use our own personal judgement to do that. In a similar vein, it's something that I saw with when I was planning this AI generated poetry video that I might make if people are interested. I kept feeding it prompts and stuff and it was giving me back poems <laughs> that were technically adequate. They were fine. The haiku had the right number of syllables, the villanelle had the right structure, all that sort of thing. If I told it to use an extended metaphor using this and this to mean this, it would do it. But they all just felt a little impersonal and empty and hollow. It all just felt a bit meh. What I love about poems is when you can see the poet's heart and soul going into it. Even if they're telling a story that isn't theirs, even if they're telling a fictional story, you can still see they put a little bit of themselves into it, you know? There's still a reason behind why they chose to use this over this. Maybe this image means something to them more than this one which may be more mainstream. Maybe they want to tell a personal anecdote about this and then you get that little personal thing. I asked an AI at one point to generate a poem for me about a rescue dog and yeah, it was cute, it was lovely. It spoke about like, oh, dancing on paws, wagging tails, all that sort of thing, but it didn't really make me feel anything because, for example, when I write about Kyra, who you can probably hear snoring next to me at the minute, she's being very cute. When I write about her and she's a rescue dog, I like to tell the personal little stories about her, her little quirks that she has, the way she has two white toes on one paw and no others, the way her little white spot on her chest I always think looks like a star and I call it her little star, the way her ears perk up when you say the word she likes, like biscuits and walkies. The way she always carries a ball around with her everywhere because she loves them. The way she loves to chase birds in the garden but she never quite catches up to them except that one time she did and she cornered one and she didn't know what to do with it so she just stood there like, Mum, what do I do now? They're the little personal things that I want to hear about in other people's writing and that I want to put into my own. And they're the little personal details that I don't think an AI is ever going to be able to authentically replicate. And that's one of the big things I think it comes down to, authenticity. While AI generated content might be technically good, it might be good value for money, it might be time saving, it doesn't feel authentic. And I think that's something that people are always going to want and when it's not there they miss it. You know? So in conclusion, while there are clear benefits to using AI to generate original content, there are also a number of potential drawbacks that should be considered. It's important to carefully evaluate the pros and cons of using AI in this way and to ensure that appropriate safeguards are in place to prevent biased or inaccurate content from being produced. And that conclusion was also written by an AI. See what I mean? It just doesn't sound like me. It doesn't sound authentic. And I think as much as we might try, 
And while some AIs might get close, I think it is always going to be missing that authenticity. And for a genuine conclusion, I do personally find AI generated content fascinating. I do find looking at, uh, looking at other people's AI generated art is quite interesting. The AI generated writing is quite interesting. I've used it for some silly jokes with my friends. Like I, I was joking, I was like, oh yeah, like, I can't come out. I'm, I'm writing a script tonight, you know, unless one of you guys wants to write it for me. And one of my friends, Charlie was like, oh, just get an AI to write it. And he was joking. I was like, oh, I'll get an AI to write it. And then I put in like a prompt and I was like, I was speaking to them, I, I got this story, I, I got the AI to write a story um, about Nick cooking dinner while Charlie hit on Daniel, but then Daniel wasn't interested and ended up going on a date with Nick and it was just hilarious, it was brilliant, and then poor Charlie got left at home and it was, it was really funny and I was like, from one simple little prompt, the AI came up with this whole like really funny story that played into like a lot of silly in-jokes with friends and stuff and I was like, that is funny and I do enjoy that kind of side of things, but I don't think AI generated content, especially art based stuff, is something I'd ever want to seriously use or pay for or promote. I do feel a little, um, I guess it's like bitter. I feel a little bitter for people who would do things, because like, I'm, I'm sure there are already some channels out there who are like using an AI to generate a video script, probably either getting a voice to text to do the voiceover or just paying someone generic to do the voiceover. They're probably paying someone to edit the video together and then just churning out heartless, inauthentic content created by no one in particular. I, yeah, I guess there is like a bitterness towards that because I'm like, they're probably earning a lot more money than me for a lot less effort. But then it comes down to like, well, I don't really care about the money that much. As long as I've got enough to live by, what I care about is producing content that connects with people about things that I'm passionate about and care about and I think having the integrity there and the authenticity is more important to me than any money. So mixed feelings you know I can understand why some people do it I just don't like it myself you know it just it feels wrong and not worth it to me but like I say I think in general AI content interesting technology but for me the threat it poses to actual humans and artists and their jobs is a little too much and it's not something I'd ever want to support financially or v verbally, does that make sense? I don't know. Anyway, all that said, I would love to hear your thoughts on this down in the comments. Let me know, have you generated any AI art or text or anything like that yourself? If so, what do you use it for and why? Do you think there are any uses where, or occasions or purposes, I guess, where it is okay to use it or it's preferred to use it? or do you have a bit of a bad feeling about it as well? I'd like to hear down in the comments. But thank you so, so much for watching today. I hope you're all having an absolutely wonderful holiday season and enjoying yourselves. And please take care of yourself, take care of others, be safe, and I'll see you again really soon.